Leader of the Select Committee, Ms. Cheney of Wyoming, for any opening mark, remarks she care to make. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. We are here to address a very serious matter, contempt of Congress by a former Chief of Staff to a former President of the United States. We do not do this lightly, and indeed, we had hoped not to take this step at all. For weeks, as the Chairman noted, we worked with Mr. Meadows' counsel to reach an agreement on cooperation. But shortly before his scheduled deposition, Mr. Meadows walked away from his commitment to appear and informed us he would no longer cooperate. We believe Mr. Meadows is improperly asserting executive and other privileges, but this vote on contempt today relates principally to Mr. Meadows' refusal to testify about text messages and other communications that he admits are not privileged. He has not claimed and does not have any privileged basis to refuse entirely to testify regarding these topics. Let me give just three examples. First, President Trump's failure to stop the violence. On January 6th, our Capitol building was attacked and invaded. The mob was summoned to Washington by President Trump. And as many of those involved have admitted on videotape, in social media, and in federal district court, they were provoked to violence by President Trump's false claims that the election was stolen. The violence was evident to all. It was covered in real time by almost every news channel. But for 187 minutes, President Trump refused to act. When action by our president was required, essential, and indeed compelled by his oath to our Constitution. Mr. Meadows received numerous text messages, which he has produced without any privilege claim, imploring that Mr. Trump take the specific action we all knew his duty required. These text messages leave no doubt the White House knew exactly what was happening here at the Capitol. Members of Congress, the press, and others wrote to Mark Meadows as the attack was underway. One text Mr. Meadows received said, quote, we are under siege here at the Capitol. Another, quote, they have breached the Capitol. In a third, Mark, protesters are literally storming the Capitol, breaking windows on doors, rushing in. Is Trump going to say something? A fourth, there's an armed standoff at the House chamber door. And another from someone inside the Capitol. We are all helpless. Dozens of texts, including from Trump administration officials, urged immediate action by the president. Quote, POTUS has to come out firmly and tell the protesters to dissipate. Someone is going to get killed. In another, Mark, he needs to stop this now. A third, in all caps, tell them to go home. A fourth, and I quote, POTUS needs to calm this shit down. Indeed, according to the records, multiple Fox News hosts knew the president needed to act immediately. They texted Mr. Meadows, and he has turned over those texts. Quote, Mark, the president needs to tell people in the Capitol to go home. This is hurting all of us. He is destroying his legacy, Laura Ingram wrote. Please get him on TV, destroying everything you have accomplished Brian Kilmeade texted. Quote, can he make a statement, ask people to leave the Capitol, Sean Hannity urged. As the violence continued, one of the president's sons texted Mr. Meadows, quote, he's got to condemn this shit ASAP. The Capitol Police tweet is not enough, Donald Trump Jr. texted. Meadows responded, Quote, I'm pushing it hard, I agree. 
Still, President Trump did not immediately act. Donald Trump Jr. texted again and again, urging action by the President. Quote, we need an Oval Office address. He has to lead now. It has gone too far and gotten out of hand, end quote. But hours passed without necessary action by the President. These non-privileged texts are further evidence of President Trump's supreme dereliction of duty during those 187 minutes. And Mr. Meadows' testimony will bear on another key question before this committee. Did Donald Trump, through action or inaction, corruptly seek to obstruct or impede Congress's official proceedings to count electoral votes? Mark Meadows' testimony is necessary to inform our legislative judgments. Yet he has refused to give any testimony at all. Even regarding non-privileged topics, he is in contempt of Congress. Mr. Meadows also has knowledge regarding President Trump's efforts to persuade state officials to alter their official election results. In Georgia, for instance, Mr. Meadows participated on a phone call between President Trump and Georgia Secretary of State Raffensperger. Meadows was on the phone when President Trump asked the Secretary of State to, quote, find 11,780 votes to change the result of the presidential election in Georgia. We know from the texts Mr. Meadows has turned over that at the time of that call, he appears to have been texting other participants on the call. Again, Mr. Meadows has no conceivable privilege basis to refuse to testify on this topic. He is in contempt of Congress. Third, in the weeks before January 6th, President Trump's appointees at the Justice Department informed him repeatedly that the President's claims of election fraud were not supported by the evidence and that the election was not, in fact, stolen. President Trump intended to appoint Jeffrey Clark as Attorney General, in part so that Mr. Clark could alter the Department of Justice's conclusions regarding the election. Mr. Clark has informed this committee that he anticipates potential criminal prosecution related to these matters and intends in upcoming testimony to invoke his Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination. As Mr. Meadows' non-privileged texts reveal, Meadows communicated multiple times with a member of Congress who was working with Mr. Clark. Mr. Meadows has no basis to refuse to testify regarding those communications. He is in contempt. January 6th was without precedent. There has been no stronger case in our nation's history for a congressional investigation into the actions of a former president. This investigation is not like other congressional inquiries. Our Constitution, the structure of our institutions, and the rule of law, which are at the heart of what makes America great, are at stake. We cannot be satisfied with incomplete answers or half-truths, and we cannot surrender to President Trump's efforts to hide what happened. We will be persistent, professional, and nonpartisan. And we will get to the objective truth to ensure that January 6th never happens again. I yield back.